Welcome to the Sargasso Champions course. You are currently tuning into one of the videos produced for this course. Founding for the course comes from the Resilience, Sustainable Energy and Marine Biodiversity program, Prasembit, financed under the 11th European Development Fund, EDF, Caribbean Overseas Countries and Territories Regional Program. Resembit is being implemented by Expertise France with the primary stakeholders being the 12 Caribbean overseas countries and territories. Let's get ready to learn together. Let, let me start to talk about Cursa because these are pictures that I made in 2020. You can see um, uh, May 31st when we were uh, on our bicycle close to Ascension, which is one of the inlets on the uh, north shore of Curaçao um, and and Martin uh, and I met up uh, a, a day before and we went to the same beach uh, last Saturday and Martin will talk about the next one uh, and in this uh, slide you see that there is actually quite a lot of uh, sargassum floating around so these are all pictures and if you go to the next one, you will see how it is at the moment. Uh, Martin? Are you there? Yeah, I'm there, sorry. I had also prepared a slide. I wasn't sure if you could join this. Uh, so if you would talk about your slides and I will talk about my slides. So then we can okay. okay. No, that's fine. Just, just tell and I will tell my little story afterwards. Okay? Okay, that's fine. So, so this is the uh, same area um uh, at at the moment and you see that we don't have that much sargassum floating around if we look at the different species that we found or morphotypes most of them had no spine no spine on the bladder no spine uh, on on the stem um so um uh, we didn't find that many different morphotypes um what you also see is that a lot of the, the sargassum is washed up until the mangrove area, which means that if there is a lot of sargassum, that uh, the, the fishes that will live there will have a, a big, big problem. Um, another interesting element that happened at that moment was um, when we arrived in the morning, there was a netting session from this uh, sea turtle uh, conservation Curaçao. They captured um, about 13 uh, sea turtles, tagged them, and they do that to check if they have tumors, if there are anything else happening, they tag them and then they know how many turtles are there in that area. Because if you go there, there's a uh, viewpoint uh, on, on top. Uh, you always see uh, turtles coming up. So, so it's a great turtle site. And on the right picture, you will see the netting that they've used for the turtles. So there's some influx of sargassum at the moment. Uh, because it kept in 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 the nets of the uh, sea turtle conservation. Um, you see also a lot of mixture of plastic. We also call this bay plastic bay, because a lot of plastic is ending up in this bay. And then the next slide is an area in the national in in the Christoffel Park, uh, which is about uh, fifteen to twenty kilometers more to the west of the island but still on the north shore and you see that that there's hardly any um sargassum there you can see some old sargassum uh the the water is nice and clear um uh, and it was beautiful we spent the night over there um uh, from saturday to sunday nice. and it, it's much rougher there than it is in the uh Karak, uh, in, in the Ascension bay so these are some uh, some recent shots from uh, Curaçao. I have entered both uh, of those observations in the tool, and I must say that went quite easy. Cool. Um, just to go back to the different sargassums you found, I yeah. think only the fourth one in the middle, uh, like from top to bottom, number four is the pelagic sargassum that we have a lot of problems with. All the others are benthic sargassum that will be like on your reef or in your before the reef starts, very natural um, sargassum that grows there. 
and that maybe has been dislodged by storm and and come to shore. So that's really interesting to see um, yeah. what kind of sargassum you have there. Yeah, yeah, there are some research papers on the sargassum that you can find that are benthic on the north side. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can differentiate the sargassum uh, pelagic that, that comes from the sargassum sea and the sargassum that you find growing on, on the north shore. Yeah, I, I'm good at identifying this pelagic sargassum so I can tell when something is a benthic sargassum, but I'm bad at telling the different benthic sargassums apart because there's like 350 species there. Okay. But I can definitely tell, and I think Evelyn may may um also jam in that I, I zoomed into this earlier. So that's yeah, why yeah. I was like, I think number four is the pelagic one and the other ones look like benthic ones. Yeah, we we had one bit with yes. spines, and I think that, that might be a correct observation. Yeah, because we also assumed that was uh, sargassum not in the number eight. That was the one that it looked most like uh, most appearances with. So yeah. Yeah, I think number four is either sargassum Nathan's eight or even fluid tense three, I think. But it's okay, hard yeah. to tell from the... Then from we the were picture. close at least. <laughs> yes. No, yeah. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy to identify them. All right. Yeah. Sometimes you can you can uh, confuse it with another, another type of sargassum that is benthic. That I think... I don't remember if it's sargassum acilium. That it has long... Um, Long place at a sargassum Nathan said. Wrong side. Yeah. I'm not sure. So who is next? Who is this? Samuel. Samuel, you want to tell us a bit about your slide? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear yes. me? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So my slide is actually a collage of um, different beaches in Anguilla um, over a two-year period. So um, some pictures are from as late as 2021, and some are as recent as about three weeks ago. Now we have uh, three different days here. We have Mids Bay, that's the one in your upper left, uh, where you see this um, nice resort in the background, that's Four Seasons. And uh, Mids Bay has not had, as far as I know, because I've only started working in the area about, let's say, about five months ago, um, it has been spared the ravages of sargassum. And uh, as you can see, there isn't a lot of um, sargassum on the beach. And then if you move to the center slide, this is sandy ground. As you can see, there is a lot of sargassum on this particular beach. And uh, a lot of intense work was being done to get rid of the sargassum because it had a very peculiar smell. And you could have taken that scent as far away as the highway. And in some instances because I did speak to some of the people who live in the area you could have probably take the scent as far as two to three miles away mm -hmm. from the actual beach so the stench was extremely strong in these in these areas most times when people pass on the highway they used to put they used to wind the glasses up <laughs> and turn on the AC because it was really really bad and it was really really strong and as you can see on your bottom right there are um, relief operations going on. Um, folks came together to stockpile the sargassum and get rid of it in a timely manner. A lot of sargassum has have been, have been found and spotted, especially on the east end of the island. As far as I'm concerned, um, where the, on the west end, uh, where the Four Seasons is um, on your up, upper left, um, Mids Bay, does not really have much sargassum on this side um, where I actually work and where I took these pictures. But um, on the east, the east is known to be very heavily affected by sargassum. 
um, so much so that uh, the representative for the area um, put out a call, you know, for people to come out um, like every other week to try and get this under control because, of course, Anguilla is well known for its beaches. And um, Sandy Ground, Sandy Hill, sorry, is one of the most popular beaches on the island. So a lot of work had to be put in to get rid of the sargasm and also monitor it to make sure that whenever there is a significant stockpile that the folks will come in, let's say on a weekend, to actually get the sargasm out. So that is basically um, my slide. I, it was actually my first time um, doing a, a slide um for Zoom, so I just decided to do a collage of different pictures of different beaches on, on the island. As I said, it's Mid Bay, Sandy Beach, and Sandy Ground beaches. And we can see the devastating e effects of sargassum in these areas, especially in Sandy Ground and Sandy Hill Beach. As I said, Mid Bay is extremely popular with, with tourists, and um, thankfully, it was not really affected as the other two which are popular with tourists, but not as much as Mids Bay, because a lot of the top resorts are on Mids Bay. So you can imagine a disaster if Sargasm would have affected these beaches, well, the beach on Mids Bay. And um, and there was a particular situation with a hotel um, on another beach, and it was so bad that the hotel had to actually move guests from that hotel to other hotels and they also had to refund um, patrons for the inconvenience because, of course, you know, you come to the beach and relax, and then you see there's basically no beach. It's all covered with sargassum, and the scent, it was the, the stench, rather, was extremely strong. So, again, you can see the effects of sargassum in a negative way on the tourism industry in Anguilla. And with that, I end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. And... Yeah, I guess Aguila is a bit um, lucky that a lot of the hotels are on the non-sargassum side of the island. That is correct. All right, we got some more pictures from St. Martin. Who's presenting on this part? I'm sorry. I was. Uh, I didn't realize I was muted. That's my no thought. worries. No worries. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. These pictures, as you can see, have uh, Guana Bay and Gibbs Bay, and then Fleur. I think you've got the next one, right? I think yes. The next one is this I one. Have, oh, I have. I uh, have the one after that. Yeah. Let me watch. Yeah. So um, this is our eastern or windward side of the island. Uh, Guana Bay and Gibbs Bay are right next to each other. They are kind of the consistent, uh, consistently plagued beaches uh, for sargasm. Uh, you can see a couple of examples. Uh, I believe this is the pelagic um, species. And then on the next slide, of course, there's the species that we found in the area. There's a lot of our shorebirds um, in the area, which this does provide a little bit of feeding for them. But these two beaches are actually uh, very high frequently visited nesting beaches. And we've had two false crawls for sea turtles already this year, which we do think the sargasm impacted. Um, so you can see that our bird species observed was a lot of the different shore birds here. Yep. Interesting. Um, my partner works uh, as a volunteer with sea turtle uh, with the sea turtle project here in Mexico, and I mean he he's on the beach almost every day, like five days a week, and he's yeah. seen a lot of turtles crawling right over it. Of course, they also have a lot of false crawls and go back, but they have over 800 nests on their beach. So a lot right. of turtles do make it over the sargassum if it's not too high. And yeah. also the small ones can make it through some sargassum. I, I haven't seen like really big sargassum, right. but I've seen footage and seen it myself that if it's, you know, maybe five centimeters or 10 centimeters thick, the, the small ones and especially the big ones can make it. 
Yeah. So here in St. Martin, uh, this year, we have actually had no successful nests um, on the Dutch side confirmed yet, only false crawls. Uh, last year, we had several hatchlings that we found um, uh, some alive, most dead in large sargasm patches on the way to the water. Um, and the concerning thing for us is that Stacia, which is uh, very close by, and Anguilla, and um, even the French side have all had confirmed nests. And this is definitely late in the year for us to have none on any of our nesting beaches. But you can see when Fleur shows her um, beach, it is a much heavier impacted area. Yeah. And then we, we also have this picture. Is this from Leslie or from Fleur? No, this is mine. But this beach is really close to the other beaches. This is just um, a little bit south of it. So it's on the eastern coast. Uh, it's from today because I like to do homework late. Sorry. It's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's not late. <laughs> if it was from tomorrow, uh, I made it. I made problem. it. Yeah. No, so. Um, I actually, when I was filling in everything and I was going to the Sargasso monitoring, I was like, oh, wait, let me check it out there. Because when I was there, I could indeed tell there was a really large influx. This beach is also very well known for um, the amount of Sargasso that uh, sits there because it's such a cove. Um, but it is a residential area. It's not that easy to get to the beach, um, but it's all homes and apartments and um, villas and stuff around there. So a lot of the people are stuck there with the fumes. So I, we do know a lot of people who have to keep their houses closed uh, because they live right on it. It's not always as bad. Uh, and it's also very hard to clean, as you can tell, because all the houses are right on it. It's a very rocky beach. I think you can see it a little bit better in the next slide. But um, on the left, you'll see um, a little bit of sandy patch. And I think that's where they do have uh, some of the heavy machinery that comes down every so often. It's not that smelly at the moment, even though there's quite a bit of decomposing um, sargassum. But I guess because the wind isn't as high, it's a little bit windy, but not that much. But um, if you go to the next one. Yes, um, Chaim, Aventia needs to be let in. So uh, this is what it kind of looks like. Uh, I couldn't really look at the morphotype because I couldn't reach the fresh stuff. <laughs> uh, I was sinking in and uh, yeah, so I couldn't reach far enough. I tried with my phone to try and get a good enough picture, but I couldn't zoom in enough to see the specifics too well. Um, you do see quite a lot of species there. Um, you see the green iguana, ground doves, ground lizards. Um, my birding is not amazing, but I think there are semi-palmated sandpipers. And I think a short-billed doe couldn't see that well. Uh, lots of flies and a few homo sapiens doing some fishing over there. Um, yeah, so it, it is quite a big mix of decomposition state. And there was no uh, removal currently. I don't know when the last time they did it. It depends on when people complain enough because uh, there's no real active removal there. We did. I did see that there was some cleanup being done, but then of the garbage, because it does collect a lot of um, uh, oceanic garbage over there. So I saw some piles of garbage, but that's that's pretty much it. Very cool. And then we go a quick hop from St. Martin to Seva. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, so yeah, so we were in Cove Bay for our site. Uh, Cove Bay located on the eastern side uh, of Seba. So as you can see, it's full of sargassum at the moment. And if we look at the panoramic picture on the lower part, we have the little cove here where you see there's like sargassum buildup. And the cove behind that is full of uh, floating sargassum. Um, we were able to find two different species uh, of sargassum. And as you can see on the picture as well, a lot of rubbish, um, oceanic garbage is coming um, our way. So this spot is quite impacted. And then if we move on to the next slide. Also a really nice picture of the bryozoans of, um, on your middle yeah, picture. We could see the close uh, yeah. yeah. And we can so see Mount Sinari in the clouds. Yes. Um, so here you can see on the left-hand side, uh, that's an area that um, people in Seba used to swim. And the sargassum actually has ended up in the little cove area. So it's 
the one spot on island uh, where it's kind of like conflicting with humans. Sometime on the south southern west side, we do get sargassum in the harbor, and they usually use a digger to fish it out because the boats uh, can get uh, stuck in there a little. But it's mainly the eastern side uh, that gets impacted, and all our shore is rocky, so it's really hard um, for removal because we do not have really good access as well. And then do you want to talk about the species? Okay. As you can see, we've seen a uh, sandpiper. Sandpiper. We've seen a sandpiper as well. Um, and we've looked through the sargassum, but a lot of it is decomposing. So we were not able to find any like sargassum frogfish or any like other larger animal, just encrusting animal like uh, bryozoans, um, snail, crabs, little things like that. And what you see, if you look in the bottom right picture, um, that sargasm is is a good half meter or more thick, um, even a meter in some parts. Um, and because, like she said, Seba doesn't have a lot of areas where it can really collect. When it does collect in these areas, it just keeps collecting and collecting and collecting. Um, and there are some other places like Spring Bay, for example, where uh, I could guess that the sargasm could be two meters thick. Um, wow. Just because it's never been removed from there because it's nearly impossible to get there. Um, except by foot. So um, yeah, it just keeps piling up, piling up and you, you jump on it. You don't know how deep it is. You don't know if there's rocks or what underneath you. So that that's very thick. I've seen sargassum like a meter thick and I've seen like almost like rock-like structures of sargassum that was piled up and there for months on, on South Caicos, but I've never seen sargassum two meters high. I, I'm just taking a guess. It might. Yeah, be I know. I'm not. I'm not saying you are. You are wrong. Yeah. I'm just like but astonished. Like at, as you walk over it, you sometimes find yourself stepping on like a boulder that you think, "Oh, how big could this thing be underneath this this mat?" So, yeah. See, that's it for Seba. Yep, yeah, that's it for Seba. That's it for Seba. Where are we going next, Aruba? Yes. Um. Before I went to Arashi. Um, there I took these pictures, but before I went there, I was at the site at a south uh, of the island, a surf site, and it was very clear over there. And therefore, I went to Arashi to see what I can find, and these are the pictures. But as I told Francisca, it was for me hard to identify if there it is act there are actually is her, um, the sargassum or just other plants um, or seaweeds from the see yeah i think some of it is sargassum so the mm -hmm. bottom left there could be some sargassum in there the yes. the middle i don't think so and the top i think there's also the not the round ones that's a different algae but the other algae looks very much like sargassum okay but yes. at that picture, they, they were like attached to a, a, a rock, a stone. They don't or have to be attached, no. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And they... I, took also, I also took a picture of the water because it was a little bit brownish alive with the dirt of the, the plants. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit brown, but let me tell you, it can, and maybe you've seen as well, it can get really brown. Yeah. Like as brown mm -hmm. as the sargassum, almost like looking like coffee or or like a chocolate milk mm -hmm. or something. Yes, I chocolate. think at the north side we can have more, but um, I didn't have the time to go to the north side of the island. Mm -hmm. Aruba is also quite big, so going to specific spots may be quite mm -hmm. time consuming. Yes, it depends where you live. Yes, and yes. if you have time. And on the roads as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so where are we going next? Ooh, Aruba as well. Is this also your your scale or somebody else's? That's no, I think this mine. is from... <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's actually mine because... As you know, I'm currently in the Netherlands, yes. and that actually already limits my abilities to go to the beach and look for fresh sargassum. So I decided to take an image I could find online, and coincidentally, I found a picture from the time when I was 
<clears throat> sorry, when I was still working on Aruba. Um, so as you can see, this was taken back in 2021. And it was taken um, most likely by a park ranger since I was working at the Aruba National Park. And the park rangers generally monitor the areas. I think it was even my colleague, the Marine Park Ranger, who took this picture. And you can see here at the map that it was um, taken at Boca Prince, which is adjacent to the national park. And it is often um, not easily accessible compared to the other beaches. So it doesn't affect frequent um, beach goers. And the influx of sargassum on this day wasn't comparable to the influxes I see from my fellow sargassum champions on the other islands. However, it was enough to warrant uh, <clears throat> it was enough to warrant the National Park Foundation to post an informative post on Facebook and raise a bit of awareness relating to their environmental benefits, but also about the issues our sister islands on Curacao and Bonaire are met, met with. So far, we suspected that Aruba isn't impacted considerably because of the geomorphological features of the island. So we don't really have a lot of enclosed bays. That's as much as I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, so with not having enclosed bays, the sargassum is more likely to move out again once it gets there. While That's correct. Both I know both Bonaire and Curacao have the problem that the sargassum can stay in the bay for a very long time without even the one that is in the water stays in there and can't get out once it's in there. Precisely. Okay. And now we're going to Montserrat. Very cool. Hi. Sorry about that. My camera is not working, but can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, so recently moved to this island, so I don't know very much um, areas um, over the island, but I've, this is the only area from asking information from the department. Individuals have recognized the sighting of um, Stagasm. The only other place is the closed areas, you know, um, one strat has a lot of more than half of the island is inhabited. So with this area, when we look um cited, I saw that it's an area where it's called Margarita B. Um, it's to the east north of the island, and this area has quite a, um it's a way on the Atlantic side. So from the photo, you could see that all three levels of um the sagasum. Fresh one, the one is which is just arrived. The, then they have the other one where it's just about to decompose, and the other that is fully dried. But was observed, um, I think from what I have seen from the free that was taught in the class, I think I only saw one type. Um, we I did rec um observe a few. I see birds. I think we're currently in the season where the migratory birds are visiting for the survey that we've been conducting currently. There's a lot of um, garbage that was collected um, that's been coming in this area. We actually had a pinup at that very beach um, last month. And most of the um, the most of the garbage waste that's coming into the area since it's coming maybe coming from the neighboring island um the this is not a beach that is actually used by the um members of the public so persons do not recreate at this um, beach at all and access to it it's it's just a a, a small truck so without any eradication or any uh, removal, sorry, of the sagasum will, will take place on that site. Yeah, also to uh, me, it seems like the sargassum, especially the dark one on top, um, mm -hmm. has been laying there for a long time. It doesn't look like it's 
um, removed a lot. No, I don't think it has ever any uh, efforts of removal has ever happened in this area, from my knowledge. And I only put one. Um, well, I only had one slide here. As I saw that I thought we were just supposed to do one slide. So that's it. Thank you very much. That's perfect. You put a lot of things on one slide, so you did well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, just to explain a little bit here. So um, I went to the Forest Bay, and as you can see on the first left-hand slide, a lot of decomposed sargasm. Um, I don't think nothing has been removed there. I think this has just been piling up for, um, I think, weeks and weeks, because when I went there, it's, um, it's very high. And then if you look in the middle part, it's it's very brown. The water's brown. You can't even swim there. And then to the right hand side, it's basically the same thing. I noticed when I went there, I saw. I think I saw two more uh, more uh, more types. I think I saw it in Nathan's eight. Um, I I don't have the right pronounce the pronunciation for the last one. I think it's the one with the S. The flu, um, with the F. Fluentans, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, fluentans. Yeah, I think I saw those. And I saw some birds. I think I saw brown swallows and some sandpipers. Um, and I noticed that the smell is very strong. Um, and I think I need to start to say they need to work on it because it's starting to really give a very, very bad toxic smell. And I think it's time to let go of those gases that um that is toxic. And I don't think it's good for anyone to be around there. I'm actually being around that place unless it's being cleaned. Um I think over there too, because it's in the forest and I know normally a lot of turtles go over there to nest their eggs. So I think in a lot of turtles are being damaged over there. Some I think eggs can't be hatched. And I think a lot of animals are probably dying inside of there that are causing also some other scents to scent to come out very strong. So um, it's something that I think it needs to be looked into. And I also went some other parts of the island. Um, I actually put it on every collect five. So um, probably could take a look at it with some more pictures. But um, I noticed that Angola is starting to actually get impact very hard with the sargasm. And I am noticing nothing is being done with it because now it's actually decomposing on the sand by itself. So it's not being moved. So it's just they're piling up, piling up, piling up. And uh, it's starting to smell real, really bad. And I think it's starting to, gonna start to hit other parts of the island. And that's just two parts. I actually went to the Forest Bay and Sandy Hill Bay. And I think other parts of the island is gonna be hit very hard with a sarcasm in the future to come. But that's my um, presentation. Yeah, and I do see there is houses back there, so they will be impacted by the smell if it's not removed. Yeah, yeah um, just to say something, actually, I if I, if I would have turned the, 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 the picture to the back, it has a lot of houses to the back, actually, because they oversee, we, the Forest Bay actually oversees St. Martin. We can actually see St. Martin right from the coastline. I don't know if you see like in the middle picture, you're seeing like a little mountain to the back. Yeah, that's right there with the mouse. That's actually St. Martin. So if actually if I were to turn the camera a little more, you would actually see the whole of St. Martin. So a lot of houses and villas are built to the back of there. So they oversee that and they are, they are actually smelling it. I can actually say something. Um, We have a radio station and someone actually tuned in three days ago and asked if someone can do smell with the of the sargasm at the forest bay but that's my presentation thank you thank you as you can see Manfred on the third picture on the right side <laughs> no but my pictures are a little bit different i show you the uh, the entry of the uh, of the uh, bay uh, mm -hmm. why did we go to ascension bay it was because of the fact like we said a couple of years ago it was affected and it is also mm -hmm. a very well-known area for the turtles and the turtle observatory. So we wanted to see what is happening at the moment. That's when we went there. Um, there is 
also some seaweed growing. And so perhaps that was also one of the reasons why you said indeed that we found the other one, the other species instead of the floating uh, sargassum. Um, but you see also a little bit of influx coming in still in the second picture, uh, that is some sargassum floating inside to come in there. Um, as you well as uh, Manfred already also told, there was little of uh, sargassum present at the moment, fortunately. Uh, the ones that was there was mostly uh, already decomposing, very little uh, new influx, which was good. And you see also some of the plastics on the on the site. Um, there was no removal, of course, because there was not that much. And uh, only the plastic was more collected by the turtle people. So that was, in all, a good picture for us that we were a little bit happy about it. Um, Another interesting thing was that afterwards I also invited two persons uh, differently uh, to, to visit again the, the day and to show them around and to tell them a little bit about the sargassum and how it uh, looks like and what the impact can be. So that was already some spreading of the uh, information we have. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's about it. Very cool. And Arantia, how was it on Provo? Ah, here is mine. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Well, what we're looking at right now is the eastern shore um, in Provo. This is on Long Bay Beach. Um, these photos that you see and were taken in the afternoon. And what I've observed is it's better to go out in the morning um, just because, again, the sargasm is fresher. Uh, give me one second, friend. Let me pause something in the background. So in the photos that you see, Long Bay Beach is actually one of our popular beaches in Provo for windsurfing. It was funny because as I was walking through the sand, I'm mean, through the sand and looking at the sargasm, there were a lot of windsurfing um, and kite surfing courses going on. So the tourists on the eastern side have almost became immune to it. I do want to go in the morning to see how the sargasm is pushed back and how it's compacted down. But as you can see from the photo, this sargasm, I put 99.9% .9 decomposed. Um, it was almost all dead. And then I said 0.1% was alive. And that was pictured to the right. And that was from me literally digging my hands through the sargasm, trying to look for things. Um, I didn't find much life in this dead sargasm. Besides from sand fleas, uh, old crab shells, but nothing that it looked like, you know, it had been there already super, super long. And this goes for miles and miles down our eastern shore. So I already know from living here that Long Bay has is one of the sides of the islands that get affected the most. But when I use the resources that you guys gave, the maps, all of the recordings were on Long Bay, Long Bay. So there are a lot of science citizen scientists out there that are reporting the sargasm so that actually made me smile because i know it wasn't people from the course and it shows that so that's why what made me choose let me go to long bay um another thing i noticed and i'll have in my next slide is a video i completely didn't even think to take videos from the shore you guys can't see too much in the photos but when you turn around you do see that dead line of sargasm under the uh, under the water. You know how it dies and then it makes this little brown tent. So the water is still nice in those turquoise colors, but you have right where the break is, a lot of dead sargasm patted down. You know how it dies and then it goes down. So those were things that I noticed. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Yes, for um, our podcast, we interviewed a photographer who lives in Fort Lauderdale in, in Florida. And he said when he sees beachgoers, they don't go in the water if they see the sargassum on top. But then they go in the water where they don't see it on top. But then sometimes it's at the bottom and it gets to your feet and people freak out. Totally so, freak out. You yes. Could that. You could see that with the... Um kite surfers out there because they're in the water and the water is about waist deep but you can see right when they're walking over that weird part that that patch of sargasm that it's just like ew, ew. so i'm looking forward to just exploring other parts of the islands 
to find the sargasm and just see how, you know, how it comes up on shore because Long Bay always looks like this. It's always dead, always. When I was just in TCI, I went to visit Kimcha Village. Yes. And they are good. doing very interesting things with sargassum. They are packing it on, on the packing sand over it to to prolong their beach and making their beach nicer and higher and like kind of make a sand dune. So if you are into going other places, you should go to Kimcha Village. I actually love Kimcha Village, Fran. I know Miss Charmaine. Um, I have visited her numerous times. She's shown me her sand packing method. Um, I actually hope she does a seniors day once a month from time to time. I go out there and I try to help when I'm in town. So, I mean, for her and for it to just be her and her husband, the manpower that they do is absolutely amazing. So that might be something cool to add and share with the group is Kim Cha Village. Thanks for bringing it back into yeah. my home. We we're hoping to do a podcast interview with her. So once we have Great. that, you guys can can yeah. hear all about it. Really awesome. Now you can go to the next slide. All now right. I'm now we go to Grand Cayman. Sorry, I misunderstood what you meant. It's okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi, can, Oscar. Uh, How are you? Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, so these pictures are from the 5th of August, um, and it's in Barker's Beach, which is in the northern part of the islands. I've like, um, yeah, the, where the pin is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's um, a mainly uh, unused beach. Um, so there's like a reason, there's like a lot more sargasm than compared to like our main beach, Seven Mile. Um, yeah, and then um, looking at the fauna there on the islands, it was uh, there were quite a lot of sand flies, like just on the surface and walking through this, the sargasm. And then when you dig through the sand, the sargasm, you find um, they called the uh, sand fleas or the uh, the the amphipod creatures. Yeah, um, yeah, there are quite a lot of those. In terms of the smell. Uh, the smell was actually wasn't that bad. It was it was yeah completely tolerable. But I think that was mostly because of the it's just really windy there. Like there's a lot of um, kite surfing there, uh, just further further east down the beach. But yeah, so it's it's really windy there. So the smell wasn't that bad. Um, in terms of I wasn't able to identify the sargasm because yeah I, this was before the course started. And I, I'm not on island right now, so I wasn't able to actually go to the beach recently. But, um, yeah. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then looking at the, um, I forgot what the uh, website was called, but the one that uh, does the Sargasm map projections. Mm -hmm. Sargasm um, monitoring. Yeah, as as far as I, I might have been misusing it or something, but as far as I could tell, it appeared that uh, the Sargasm was just... Um, just missed the island or appeared to dissipate before it actually reached the island. So that was, yeah, that's pretty good. And yeah. then also, uh, th and, that was just for Grand Cayman. And, yeah. then it was and that, for, that website is just if people put in pictures. So it can be that there's a lot of sargassum on your island or on the beach. And if there's nobody reporting, it may not be shown. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably more likely the case because whenever I go, uh, snorkeling or diving, I do usually see mats of sargasm just uh, in the open ocean. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, like according to the website, it was like the closest one was roughly 48 kilometers away, the closest yeah. like significant patch. Uh, and also and then... the, the SAM tool website that does the um, projections, they haven't included Cayman Island yet. So that is the only island uh, included in this course that they just have don't have any customers or haven't you know are is a bit further away from anywhere where they have customers. So oh. that's why maybe you see it coming, but you don't actually see it landing on the tool. Because... Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what happened in the projections. Yes. I'm I'm not I'm not surprised for the Cayman Islands, but <laughs> sounds pretty typical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, and also I observed that there's quite a lot of plastic that had uh, become like 
entrapped or like mixed in with the sargasm. And then in terms of government action, um, there isn't really any right now, but last year they trialed like um, they trialed a pumping and they tried to just pump the sargasm from um, a beach in north side, which um, yeah, which is not in by Barker's beach, but yeah, they tried to pump it from north side and then into our landfill. Um, like the uh, success was kind of um, it's wishy washy, it wasn't perfect, but. Yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you for listening. Thank you, and very cute dog. Yes, that's Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the British Virgin Islands. And these are the pictures um, from Julie. So now we got Julie and Arona. Hi. Um... These are pictures of the sargasm that was on the beach at Handsome Bay on Virgin Gorda. Um, all different states, a lot of it decomposing. I waited out, um, but it was very deep. We looked for some critters for a little bit, had a little bit of success. The only one I could really um, think maybe I was identifying something properly was number one there, and um, that was number type three. And um, I also believe that those are hydroids on the little white um, dots on there, stinging hydroids, actually. Uh, these um, little ones are bryozoans. Yeah? Yeah, the hydroids are like a little tree that looks, that goes out. Okay. Well, there were stinging hydroids in there because I got stung. Yeah, I, I bet um, they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel pretty certain that there are all types of sargasm at Hanson Bay simply because about 10 or 12 years ago, we held one of the first sargasm conferences and tons of people came from all over the world and I collected sargasm to send off with them because it was novel and new then and we wanted to learn things about it. And they identified um, pretty much everything that was known at that time. So it was raining and I was hurrying. So next slide. Um, this is Handsome Bay. Handsome Bay is on the south windward side, um, facing south and a bit east on Virgin Gorda. Um, it sits in front of residential area. So the only time the government ever does anything is when enough people complain and the stench gets bad enough because it is windward to pretty much the main settlement of the island. Um, people complain that you can smell sargassum all over. I think I'm a bit immune to it. Um, a few weeks ago, it was, it was quite strong, but now it's um, fairly decomposed. Um, what I find kind of interesting and fun about this beach is our government, the last time they cleaned it, was a little bit over a year ago when they use excavators and dump trucks, which I find very distressing just because it tears up the beach. But um, where this rock and this picture is taken is right in front of one of my friend's houses. And since the hurricane in 2017, since Irma came through here, she's added about 25 feet of property to the front of her, her property because the sargassum is constantly rebuilding the beach. The picture to the left is going down towards the north and more eastern end, which is the bay where our city water plant is. So sometimes there gets to be an issue with water color here because it does decompose and get trapped in that bay. There's a small um, barrier reef out in front of this bay so stuff when it circles in from um, left to right, it gets holed up down in the end by the water plant. The picture in the middle is looking over to the right. And the interesting part I find about this is about, I don't know, probably four months ago, the ocean actually washed all of this part of the beach and there was no seaweed at all, no sargassum. A little bit of a new algae that I haven't seen before. Lots and lots of this beach um, vegetation from all the beach building that's happening on everything that's got buried. And um, yeah, at the deep end where the government cleans, it's probably like, I don't know, 12 feet deep. 
because the few times they have cleaned it, they pile it up, they truck some away, then they leave it there. Um, as far as wildlife, um, it was raining. I had some kids with me. So we did take our little, um, like we have a viewing glass that we use, waited out. We saw a couple crabs. We saw um, a little lobster. Um, the picture on the left is actually, we call them yard fowl here, wild chicken. They seem to okay. be really excited about the sargasm yesterday. And then in the middle, a big white egret. There were laughing gulls and a couple pelicans. Um, lots of sand fleas, other hopping, insecty looking animals. Down in the deep end, <clears throat> if you dig, there are amazing amounts of worms. I've seen that before too. Yeah, if it's well, really very old sargassum, you start getting worms. There and it almost some... becomes like earthy as well, the sargassum itself. Exactly. There are some people who are like exploring vermicomposting as a disposal method based on how big the pile is and how long it's been there. I'm not feeling it's an effective disposal method. But what I found interesting was we collected samples. There were a couple kids at our community college who were um, doing studies on the worms because they've had issues with vermiculture in like the Northwest of the U.S. or in the Dominican Republic where it's either harmed endemic worms, indigenous worms, or it's harmed the vegetation. So it makes me always think about what are these worms and how did they get here and why are they in the seaweed? So we sent the worms over to the college and they checked them and they actually checked out to be a species from South America. Very and interesting. So other than riding here on the sargasm, I'm not really sure how they get here. I don't really know what kind of threat they are or what kind of endemic worms we have here, but I am not like, that's not my specialty. I don't know if anybody knows any worm people, but I'm definitely interested in further discussing the worms. And if any of you guys have worms in the bottom of your old seaweed piles where you guys live. Um, okay, Rona did the slide. So let's see what's next. We have next, I think. Next, this. This and this is, is, is the last here. one. Oh. Um, this is a beach over on Tortola. The way the BVI is situated, Virgin Gorda is a bit south and east. Well, actually north, but anyway, it's farther south. It's closer to St. Martin. And Tortola is behind us. So Virgin Gorda is really blessed in that we have no touristy windward beaches, just the beach you just saw that had all the seaweed that affects local people. And... Um, Tortola is pretty much the same. This is a local beach down in Sea Cows Bay, which is right in the middle of Tortola. Um, it rarely, if ever, has been cleaned. And because it's so shallow in there and the way the water pushes in there from the channel, um, it sits in big floating mats and doesn't necessarily land as much. Um, I don't know how this beach dissipates. I know the marina that's just above it or maybe below it. I don't know. I live in Virgin Gorda. I get confused sometimes. They have booms in front of their marina to keep the seaweed from going in there. So I think that the majority of this is dissipated by the currents and wave action. Okay, next. Um, these are some of the creatures. So in the middle is a little crab that we found out there. Um, inside of the plastic water bottle is um, what we believe to be St. Martin lobsters. And um, I did not collect him on Monday. We collected him about a month and a half ago when it was much lighter. And kids don't think I'm quite as crazy when I say, hey, let's go wait out in this seaweed and see if we can find anything living. Um, and then over on the right hand side, you see that there's that whole mix of ocean garbage, plastics. Um, another thing that we credit St. Martin with. So sorry about that, St. Martin, but hey, you're the next place below us or beside us. Um, next picture. I think that was it? it. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting to hear that you had enlargement of the beach because I've seen a Facebook post from a beach in the French side of St. Martin just last week that showed like pictures from like a few years back and now and that 
due to sargassum and sargassum removal, their beaches become smaller. So that's really um, depending that on the beach. That was always my my concern at Handsome Bay because they just literally go down there with an the excavator and just scoop stuff up. It's terribly destructive. But um, we have had several years where the influx is not not heavy enough for the government to justify the expense of hiring the trucks and the excavator and by it sitting there and some of it getting pushed up with wave action from summer storms and stuff like that it is actually built landmass in their front yard yes and that's what you know a lot of people say it's good against beach erosion if it's in small amounts of sargassum so that's why small amounts should not per se be removed and the other thing that you told us, which I find alarming, is that the bay where you water um, desalination plant, if I understood correctly, lays sometimes has brown water from the sargassum. Yes. And I wonder, I know a desalination plant pretty much takes everything <laughs> out of the water. It becomes very pure. But I still wonder if all those toxins that could be in that water are taken out. That doesn't yeah, sound not... very safe. Not sure if the arsenic and the uh, other heavy metals come out. And um, I don't use city water. <laughs> I have a cistern, so I just go with whatever falls on the roof, you know? <laughs> that's good for you. I think that's smart to do. But some people may be dependent on city water and they may be at it's risk. A, it's um, something that, that the powers that be are informed about. Unfortunately, that's how a lot of things are here, that people know what's happening. And and um, it always comes back to resources and money. Yes. And um, our government has not chosen to dedicate resources, money, research. It's difficult to get grants in the BVI, a whole host of things. But we're still having fun looking at sargasm and thinking about how we can make use of it. Of course, that's that's the spirit, I think, rather than to getting just um, really frustrated. So, Evelyn, you yes. want to take it away? Yes, well, first of all, I was going to say about your presentations. Thank you, everybody who took the time to go to the beach. And I, f I found some interesting things of your pictures. One of those was the amount of sargassum in Curacao in one of the bays. The I think it was the first slide. And the other thing is that you found a lobster in the sargassum. I have never found a lobster and worms in sargassum. So I I hope that the discover of, of a new maybe a new species of worms and it's very interesting that it's it is from south america the worm you saw also well uh, for the ones that make the questionnaire here are the answers the first question was what is sargassum well sargassum is a pelagic and brown algae in short terms like that and how many species of pelagic sargassum do we have in the Caribbean? We have two. Natans. Natans. Why don't we have the third one? Because then the answer would have been good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a trick question. It's not that easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it says pelagic, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. When we can use some tool well there are a couple of of oh i'm sorry there when when the sargassum will land on the beach or the coastlines in general we want to forecast and also to use it as public authorities fisheries and maybe very important of uh, some of the islands for the tourists sector operations and the marine safety wildlife protection why not and valorization and don't forget research and also 
used to help mitigation, anticipate the size and the timing of influxes to correctly size the responses. So this will help us to manage the risk of landing. When is the best time to collect sargassum on the beach? It is not, uh, as you have seen maybe in other islands, there is not a special uh, time, but when you see that you have a high inundation, you should collect or clear up your beach because sometimes it might happen that you can over sanitize the beach. So that will be not good for the ecosystem of the beach. And if we let high in the inundations, as some of you show in the photos, you will feel the toxic gases and start smelling them. And also maybe you could fi find the dead of fauna in some extreme cases. So, well, <laughs> that are the responses. Hope everyone have it right after watching the videos. And that's all. I don't know if any of you have a question about the questions. Well, best time, I wouldn't say is, well, it's about timing. So <laughs> but that's uh, when it's just coming on the island or not. So when it's still yes. fresh, the toxic um, air. Yeah, the French islands, uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe, they say it should be collected within within 48 hours after it has reached the island so that you don't get the to toxic gases and decomposition as bad. Right. <clears throat> yes, that's right. I, I, I forgot to put that, but thank you. Yes. Are there any other questions about the home at uh, the, the little quiz? Okay, so number two, mm -hmm. um, from what you saw, it said three. Is that um, it said the answer is two, but when you so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there are two species, and one species has two morphotypes. Oh. So that's why I said it is a trick <laughs> question because you got. <laughs> Sargassum fluitans and sargassum natans. Okay. And there are three common morphotypes. So there's fluitans three, natans one, and natans eight. But there's also some very uncommon morphotypes that are also exist. And people like Evelyn, who are very good at identifying them, actually can identify them. I normally just see something and I'm like, it doesn't look like the three morphotypes I know. <laughs> yes. All right, thanks. Yes. <clears throat> Actually, I saw in your photos of you of your presentation that you have more Nathan's eight than Nathan's one and Fluitans three. So most of you took photos of Nathan's aid. So that's interesting because actually here at the Caribbean in Mexico, in Quintana Roo, we have the three morphotypes, the two species, almost in the same, uh, we have one part of the year, we have almost the same per percentage of each morphotype arriving to the coast. And in the early June, February, we have more Nathan's eight, and then we have Fluitans three for four months, and then we start having Nathan's one and Nathan's eight again. So you can find that in our recent research that I made with my colleague, Eden Magaña, um, maybe I will send you the link for our paper so you can check it and see if the proportions 
may be the same as you have in your Iceland's. But what I saw in your pictures, you have mostly Nathan Saint. Yeah, which is very cool. And a lot of places like Fluid Tense 3 is often dominant. But then, as Evelyn said, there is times when Nathan's 8 is dominant, and maybe that's what's happening right now. Plus, we just had the hottest water in the Atlantic ever recorded by far, and the sargassum season has been very unusual with not peaking, not getting much higher after May into June and into July. So it could be mm. that Nathan's 8 is more tolerant of the high um, temperature. Definitely, yes, yes. Because you got, Evelyn, you did growth experiments in, in your lab, and which one was the one that can do the highest temperatures? Yes, uh, Nathan said it is one of the most resistant, yes. Uh, he's like, I, I like so much Nathan said because he is like, oh, I want to live. I can live in cold water. I can live with middle term water. I can live in hot water. So uh, he is like, oh, I'm very happy at 28 degrees. He started having more um, air blades and blades and uh, it's longer for five days. He gets longer. So, well, yes, I, I will say that. So that may be because of the high temperatures we had and hopefully people around the Caribbean who are like, especially the scientists are looking at morphotypes this year and we can see if maybe there is a difference in how much of each is present. I don't know. We'll see. It's something we'll probably find out more about as next year progresses and, and so on. So I'll stop yeah. sharing my screen. And I wanted to ask you all, you had a lot of videos to watch. You you learned how to identify sargassum. You learned how to use SAM tool. You learned how to use EpiCollect. You checked out the sargassum monitoring website. Um, you checked out the book. How useful did you find these tools? Um, did you have problems with any of it? Um, let me know. Um, yeah, speak up if you have any thoughts or or ideas okay. or problems. With me, the tools were very useful. The only tool I have in I was having an issue with is the tool I was predicting the what was landing on site. The sand was, tool. Yeah. So I wasn't able to use it as accurate or even when I open it and I show up the monstrat map, there was nothing appearing around it. And that was, so there was yeah, that, that was for that Cayman Islands, right? No, monstrat. For Montserrat, okay. Yeah, so I had that issue. So where, as the map supposed, the summer um, tool is supposed to show you the prediction in terms of what is coming in, the volume, or even mm -hmm. the um being able to calculate the size, I was not able to see that. So I'm not sure if I was doing something incorrectly or is it um you can actually assist in that regard. Yes, I will have a look this week if I can see anything for Montserrat. Hopefully get to it tomorrow or otherwise Thursday. And we have you all have access to the SAM tool for a whole month. Okay, so thanks. keep using it. If you think it's useful, keep exploring it. Um, yes, but I will also have a look to see what's happening with um, Sam Tool and Montserrat. And I know um, um, the person I know best, um, Marion at CLS is back now. So I can also ask her what, what's going on there in terms of the data. Um, I do know that close to the Cayman Islands, they don't they don't do it. You just have up to the Cayman Islands, but not the actual Cayman Islands. But I thought Montserrat is actually included in in their predictions all the way up to the coast. I was also wondering the oh hello everyone I'm I'm now home so I can talk. 
But I was also wondering the accuracy of it as well, because like I showed in one of the diagrams, it shows that it's predominantly hitting the sort of the southern side of the island coming through the Anguilla Canal and hitting sort of slamming that island. And I noticed that both me and one of my colleagues um, did take a look at beaches on that side. But one of the beaches I included was actually on the north side. And there's no predictions of any sargasm based on, is it SL? What is it? What's the Sam acronym? Tool. Uh, CLS. Yeah. yeah, CLS. Yeah. So based on that, I wasn't finding anything for the northern side of the island. And yet there is evidence, obviously, of sargasm, like you saw for Island Harbor, which is on the northeast of considerable... Um, uh, sargasm, uh, I don't know what Amounts. you call it. Amounts. Yeah. Sure, exactly. So I, I get it's kind of following the tide and it's predicting how it's going to go, but maybe there's subcurrents, et cetera, in and around the islands that it doesn't account for. Yes. Right? So it's it... accumulating based on on sort of those subcurrents. And I know on there, there is an option where you can click to show the currents. If you go... Like there, there's a there, there's an option where you can check where you can tick and it'll show you the wind, it'll show you the currents, etc. So I guess you personally can kind of try to correlate or take a look or predict yourself, but in the actual prediction option, it doesn't really show that, unless I'm doing it wrong. Yes, and <clears> they which also is possible. they take where the sarcasm is now and then they check what current is there and where that current goes, but they don't take like every few meters the new spot of the sargassum. So when they are um, calculating it, you know, they do time steps of, okay, in these six hours, I forgot how many hours they do it, but in these six hours, the patch will go with the current right here to there. And then for the current that is there to the next one. So it is not perfect. But it does, I think it does help to see if anything arrives on your island, but not per se which beach it arrives, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other um, feedback, um, thoughts about the different tools? Can be positive, can be negative? Um, about the um, tool you said, oh. you said about the book. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't. I haven't received the book yet, so just as a comment. Uh, so that yes, might be we haven't we haven't sent the book yet, but in the in the homework or in the syllabus, there is a link for the PDF, so you can look at it on your computer. Okay. But we we're still waiting for the shoes to be made, so we can send the book. Unfortunately, okay. I know the big comments that it's very easy to use them and to access them. So the uh, tutorials were very clear about it. So quite easy to, to uh, install and use it. Very cool. Anybody else? Yeah, um, I found the, the sample a little bit um, difficult. Uh, also for Aruba, so I don't know. Um, but I heard now other people had also a little bit of issues with it, so maybe yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than the 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 other thing, you know. Yes, it's it's very technical. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, but and, and it's made. It yeah, it. it's also made for people like to learn how to use it and then use it quite often. So I think with the time, when you do it the first time, when I first looked at it, I was also very, it wasn't as intuitive as, for example, the EpiCollect app to me. The EpiCollect okay. app also has some technical difficulties at times. Um, but yeah, the SAM tool, you really need to, to spend some time to learn what it can do, but then, there is a lot it can do, which is kind of exciting. But and I think if you use it quite often, several times a week, you will get very comfortable using it. Mm, yeah, I, I will try it out more. The if you collect was very easy, and yeah, indeed, I have to get more deeper into the other one for sure. 
Yes, I found the apical left. I didn't use it, but it looks very interesting to use to collect the data. And yes, I need to um, experience it as well. And I have a question about that. If you don't have connection, does it work offline? Collect? No, you need you need to have connection in order to upload your information. So I but found you, it very useful you as can well. Go, yeah, you can go to the beach and collect your information, but then at home you mm -hmm. have to click upload. on upload. Yeah. Ah, okay, that is possible. All right. But I, I found that that doesn't, I'm not sure if that actually, well, I don't know. For me, it might not have worked like that because when I went down to the beach, I went to upload the information and when it asked for um, like the location, it reads where you are. And for some reason, it, it wouldn't, up, like it wouldn't read it. So it was about to rain and I was like, no, I'm, I came all the way down here. I want to get this done because I wanted yes. to finish this this assignment. So I had to turn it off and turn it back on and go back in. But once it did read the location, then after that, it's so user friendly. It's so easy. It talks you through every step. And within like five, 10 minutes, you're done. Like it's yeah. not a long process, but it needed to read the location in order to upload it. Yeah. So because, you have to make the... sure you have location enabled on your phone, which doesn't need internet, it's just GPS signal. Okay, and okay. you have, I think before you use EpiCollect for the first time, you have to give EpiCollect um, access or like allow it to use the location. Yeah, it was fine. It was not that difficult. The only problem was that the letters uh, in, the, in the titles were in black. So you have to adapt them in a different color. So first time I was yes. typing two times and then so nothing. <laughs> that was a little bit confusing. Only remark. Yes, I think the Google Slides are not as good as PowerPoint that most of us are used to, but it's a way for us to, to make a presentation together. Um, so if there's no more comments about how last week went, then I think I'm going to share my screen again just to tell you about the homework for next week. Perhaps Francisca, I have a general yeah. question. Uh, yes. More, I, what is the expectation in general for the future of the whole growth of uh, the sarcasm? Will it grow uh, exponential? Will it stay like this? Or will we have the seasonal influences a lot? Is there any prediction about what we can expect for the, for the coming years? As far as I know, there's not. So... For a very long time, it was said that it's very fluctuating. So I think until 2018, there used to be some years where there's almost none. And then other years where there was a lot. And then it has been kind of almost, in, and sometimes some places get more than other places, depending on how the currents go. And then from 2018 on, it's been kind of on a high level, but difficult to say if it was actually increasing. It's still like up and down. And I don't know anybody who works on the prediction tools who's been like really focusing on the amounts in the whole Caribbean, who's made a prediction of what happens. I think everybody says this is a new system. It still surprises us all the time with new seasons and new rhythms um the seasons have become longer um people predict that it's here to stay for a while and that it's not going to be easy that it goes away which they first thought maybe at, at the beginning maybe this will go away but people are pretty sure it likely will, won't go away or will take several years to go away if it does but nobody really knows Unless, Evelyn, do you have any other information that I'm not aware of? Well, as you said, is that you you say the the main point that Stargasum has seasons and temporalities. So we might say that there are more years where you can find more Sargassum. Um, I, I will be... Uh, this is not scientific taste. But 
um, studying the seasonality here in Mexico, we saw that there were like lapses of two years when we have a high influx, then a less influx, a very low influx. But this year was different from all the, the past 10 years. So uh, sargassum has its own cycle of life. So it's difficult to say, very difficult. Um, we the only thing we have learned to do is like to monitor to monitor also the water temperature and to see how it behaves with the changes with that kind of changes and we also have seen that there will be a time or there will be places in the Caribbean that will have more influx of one of the species always, not the tree species. So it's it's not for me to say this will be over or you will have more in one year because we were waiting here in Mexico to this year to have a higher influx of sargassum than the last year. And what happened is that we have a lower influx of sargassum this year. So even us as scientists, we might not be able to do that. <laughs> but that, that is a, that's a very, very important uh, observation uh, because if you talk about this problem uh, in an economical way, you want to know at least a little bit about predictability, about costs that you have to make uh, and investments that you want to make for this uh, yeah, reserves to clean it up. And if you then don't know how much or if it's even going to stay, that, that, that is quite important, I would say, to, to, to focus on at least to, to get some resources uh, Yes, and in video yes. 10, it is actually listed as one of the challenges that it's hard to predict and very variable. So that is one of the big challenges we have with sargassum because it's not very predictable. And if you want to start a business and you want to get yeah, investors, but... it's 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 a nightmare a bit of, of telling them what, how much you're going to have and, and so on. Yeah, I was going to say that that's why when we talk about business with sargassum, um, my opinion or, yes, my opinion or suggestion would be that you have like different lines of production with different types of resources that you can gain from the ocean. In this case, if you found the sargassum or something in sargassum then you should have something that could be um instead of sargassum instead of using sargassum you can use maybe uh bananas i don't know <laughs> i am just uh, uh imagining what could we use or cocoa uh, instead of sargassum or maybe we could use another algae that comes to the shore not in the same amount as sargassum, but that can can be used as fertilizer or the main material of your product. And uh, the main issue here is to to see less sargassum rotten in the beaches. So that's. The, the topic the topic is to see less sargassum rotting in the beaches so you have less health issues around the beaches less erosion yeah. uh, less mortality in the in the in the beach or in that eco ecosystem although we have seen that many birds like to eat from the sargassum but it's not always like that because uh sargassum when it's rotting and when it's rotten uh it uh, it really is not a very nice thing to be in 
Yeah, and also maybe not just on the beach, but also not have sargassum rotting in landfills. Yes. Yes. Martin, do you have yes. your final remark? Yeah, exactly. No, I was because I, I'm a little bit surprised about this because you you told us last uh, week that uh, the Saragossa Sea, where the Saragossa was uh, where it was started, and that's it's there for centuries. So I would assume that there should be a little bit more data available about uh, amounts uh, and growth, etc., in that specific area, so that we could extrapolate now that it's out there. Uh, there is there and... is for that area. So we have. A very interesting podcast interview with the people from Texas A&M, like the Texas University. And they they went through all the newspaper articles from back, 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 like even from like the Civil War when people were hiding in the sargassum to not be seen by the other um, the other army, like crazy stuff like that. And because every time the sargassum was bad in Texas, it would be written about in, in the Galveston newspaper. And they found, I think it's like it was like a cyclical thing of eight every eight years. And then they looked it up with um the satellite. So they were the first ones even before the sargassum belt started, that they were looking at sargassum with satellites. And they found how there is a um how the the connection between the Sargasso Sea and the Gulf of Mexico is very cyclical and there's like every eight years there's a lot of it. However, it doesn't seem first of all, eight years is a very short time, it's very long time compared to like the 12 years we now have this sargassum belt. So there may be a cyclical um thing happened that is on the same time scale but we cannot see it yet because we've only gone through one one cycle of eight years and it's a completely different area of the ocean that you know the the cur it's different currents different conditions um so i don't know if it's gonna have the same um the same ways but we do know from them how you could figure out that stuff and that's why we're using satellites as well to to study this but until now nothing has been found in terms of like a pattern and whenever people think they found a pattern you have a year like this year which is again completely different and then everybody starts doubting the pattern or not sure if they can use the pattern for prediction very interesting. Very, very yeah, interesting. I wish I could tell you like, oh, this is the pattern. This is easy. But unfortunately, the more I learn about sargassum, the more I learn it's just very complicated. Yeah. So for this week's homework, we have um, some on demand, some videos again to watch. There's three videos made by Sir Mies, which are actually made with the people you see in the videos. So the people who are in the videos were producing these videos and, and deciding what comes in the videos, what is the title going to be. And it's three communities in, um, that are telling how they are impacted by sargassum from St. Lucia. And then a video number nine is um, a video about what what formed the Great Sargassum Belt or where does the sargassum come from? And we've made that video because, first of all, Rick is really good at explaining this. And second of all, that's the main question or one of the main questions I always get asked. So you may get asked that too once you you start talking to people about sargassum or some people may have their ideas of where it comes from and they maybe don't ha know all the like don't know the newest um pretty um theories so you can you can help people understand why sargassum is coming to their beach 
So those are the three vid four videos, and they're probably one of the most exciting videos we have in this course. So I think you're going to really enjoy them, and they're also not that long. And then for the homework, we want you to go out again for the ones who are on island and um, talk to locals. It can be your friends. It can be, it doesn't have to be somebody you've never met. And um, we have this checklist. So there is this um, document here. It's just a short checklist. I'm going to open it so you can see it of things that could be impacts of sargassum on your island. So there is a lot of different things and there may be stuff that we didn't think of that, that you find, but we try to in include almost everything that we could think of. And you don't need to bring the checklist with you, but it's just for you to, to have if you, if you need it, if you need help. Um, you know, it's it's always nice to have a checklist to look through or to show people and be like, what have you seen? Um, sometimes you also look more official if you want to talk to people you don't know that well and ask them questions. If you have a clipboard and a piece of paper or you have a survey on the iPad, they maybe think, yeah, your survey is more official than you just asking them questions. So that's why we, we made this tool for you to use or, or not use, depending what you want. But make sure you talk to several people to find out how your island is impacted. So how are people on your island impacted? If you can, and this is going to be much harder than on the beach, that's why I say if you can, um, if you see one of those impacts that is you, you're able to take a picture of or take a video of, Please take some pictures, please take some videos because you're making a slide again to present. So, you know, pictures and videos are always fun. But if you, you know, some impacts are, are hard to grasp in a picture, don't feel bad if you don't have any pictures and you just write down what you found. That's completely okay. And then make the slides and also solve the quiz after you've watched the videos. Are there questions about the homework? No, all clear. All clear. Nice. Well, <clears throat> another perhaps then a remark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if we do it together. Uh, yes, uh, you can do it together. Of, yeah, but then we will probably have in this case, because it's quite for going, so you will have one slide only that we don't put up, one or two slides only that we present together, or? or yes, that's to? fine. You can, if you do it together, you can make a slide together. As you see, if you have too much information to cram on one slide, you can have two slides or three slides. Like, we just want to make sure that when we are talking in class, I want you guys to talk as much as you can and give most of the time to you guys. To This course is made possible through funding by the Resilience, Sustainable Energy and Marine Biodiversity Program, ResinBit, financed under the 11th European Development Fund, EDF, Caribbean Overseas Countries and Territories Regional Program. ResinBit is being implemented by Expertise France, with the primary stakeholders being the 12 Caribbean Overseas Countries and Territories. The course was designed by Francisca Elmer and Evelyn Salas and the videos were produced by Marcel van der Kamp.